Well, hello everyone. And now this is the second part of the animation that we're doing uh, regarding the um, uh, model-based design and the fact that if you capture your models and you model them the correct way, you're modeling more than just the model, you're modeling the design intent. So as you may recall, uh, in this particular model, I had specified a variable T. And when T is 0.9, you get a very thick web right here. And when T is 0.1, you get a very thin web as witnessed by the fact that we can do a nice little cross section. And what I'd like to do is figure out what's the T variable that will give me exactly 50,000 PSI as a strain, as a maximum, uh, I'm sorry, maximum stress on this uh, little device here. So to proceed, I go into the uh, application uh, design. There we go, application design. And what we're doing is a structural analysis. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip the idealized part. We don't need it because we don't have a lot of fillets and a lot of little holes that I uh, want to create or, or want to get rid of. And we're going to create a solution. So it's a linear static solution. And we're going to uh, employ the um, element iterative solver here. And we're going to say, OK. So this is a very, very streamlined um, ability that we have. We're going to assign the mass properties. And this uh, part is aluminum 6061 right here. And of course, that doesn't really have anything to do with the stress on the part. That has everything to do with the deflection. But um, you really can't do an analysis unless you have uh, put the mass properties, the material properties on the part. And now we're going to use a tetrahedral, tetrahedral mesh. Um, the cool thing about when you uh, apply a mesh to a part is when you hit the uh, automatic element size, it gives you a, a suggestion as to how big the element should be. And then it's kind of customary to uh, uh, half that and say, OK, we're going to use a Jacobian of 10, which means in that tetrahedron, there are nodes in between the usual nodes of a tetrahedron. And I'll put up a little graphic um, in the video as to what that means. But um, we're going to use Jacobian of 10 and an element size of 0.4 inches and say, OK, the part is roughly 18 inches long. There's a two inch um, embossment right here. And you can see how quickly uh, the measure takes uh, this thing and, and just does a really great job with it. OK, so now we have to go into the constraints. And uh, this is a cantilevered situation. So we're just uh, fixing this end cantilever. And I'm going to put 10,000 pounds here. Or I'm sorry, um, 1,000 pounds. So I'll put a load here. It's going to be a force load. It's going to be in that little face right there. It's going to be 1,000 pounds. Um, and it's going to point in the direction of um, minus y. Okay, so it's going to point downward minus y. So this is a very um, standard, or I should say, a very uh, frequent situation, common situation, where you have a bracket like this that's welded or bolted to a wall, and you're supporting some some device. Okay. So right now we have a certain web thickness. It's a it's a pretty thin web thickness, and I want to know what the uh, stress is, the maximum stress on this figure. And so what I'm going to do very easily now that I've set this thing up is I'm going to go into the solution here, and I'm going to do a uh, model setup check. I do the model setup check because sometimes these uh, runs take a very long time. And you don't want to uh, run the thing when you've got some obvious errors. So if you do a model set setup check and you see, um, it'll show you if there are any errors. As you can see, I'll have zero errors. 
Um, errors typically happen when you forget to put the mass properties on or there's something wrong with your mesh or whatever. It's nice to do a model setup check. And then once you do the model setup check, you can then go ahead and solve the case. So you hit the solve and you say, okay, you can now <clears throat> fold your arms and watch and you can um, go out and have your uh, ice cream sundae. Um, it says here that the uh, Nastran deck is successfully written. That's a good sign, but you really have to watch this little um, job monitor. And as you can see, it says completed. That's good. And uh, what we do is we can close all of this down. And then we have results. Um, what I'm looking for is the stress. Um, I want the um, I want the elemental stress and I want the von Mises stress. Here it is, von Mises stress. And what this is telling us is that with a thousand pounds um, on this piece of geometry, we're getting uh, a stress of uh, about 8,000 PSI. 8,000 PSI, um, there's only a thousand pounds on this. So this is not a lot of stress for an aluminum part that's roughly one inch thick. And, um, and that's with a very thin little web. Um, if you want to see the animation, you click on the little animate doodad here. Uh, you've got to take into account uh, that the animation is always way more exaggerated than it would be in real life. So, so now we know that the stress on this member is about 8,000. And that is with a very thin uh, web, okay? So we're going to return home and we're going to uh, navigate to the part. I'm going to open it in the window. And because I built this um, with um, this T variable, I can very quickly and easily uh, iterate upon this design. So I'm going to put 0.75 in there. And that means there's going to be a really thick, thick web. And um, at that, uh, at that uh, thickness, uh, when we run the case again, we're going to find that there is a very different uh, uh, profile. So I'm going to click on the arm and I'm going to display the FEM, the finite element model. Uh, that's good. And then I'm going to click on the, um, as you can see, there's a little icon uh, by the FEM. This little, uh, it's very, it's, it's kind of small right here, but it's a little arrow, circular arrow that says that the mesh is um, is not updated to the model. You can see, if you look closely, this line indicates where the new surface is, and this mesh is really not following the new surface. So what I've got to do here is click and say update. And as you can see, uh, it only takes a quick minute because the auto mesher is so powerful and so optimized here in NX that it's now updated, okay? So once I uh, update the FEM, then I can go ahead and uh, take a look at the simulation and I can run the simulation again. I can say solve. I don't have to do a model setup check because I know that the model set up well. And I could say, okay, again. So we know that at uh, when T is 0.1, T equals 0.1, we got about 8,000 PSI. And now what we're trying to find out, this is completed. It's pretty cool how fast this works and how quickly you can get these um, these answers um, that would take you a very long time by hand. If I go into the structural analysis and I go to the same elemental stress and I look at the von Mises stress, as you can see, the stress has gone down by quite a bit. So when T equals 0.75, you get a stress of about 4,500. Okay. So now, um, let us just assume that uh, what we're looking for is 6,000, a maximum stress of 6,000. And we want to know what the, um, what the, uh, the wall thickness is that will give us a maximum stress of 6,000. Well, certainly we can keep going back and forth to the model and we can keep um, iterating ourselves. But what we really want to do is find a way to get NX to do it automatically. Um, and that's pretty awesome that that's even conceivable. So 
I'm going to return home to the home. And now I'm going to click on the simulation and I'm going to go into new solution process and I'm going to do a geometry optimization, geometry optimization.